In our last video, we talked about how they fought the war. We talked about that once the Germans advanced into France, the French dug, dug these trenches to prevent any more advancement, and now this resulted in a stalemate. Here is typically what it looked like. You would have your front trench, and the trenches were in many cases higher, taller than the man, taller than a typical man. And so when they went to attack or fire upon, if somebody was attacking them, many trenches would have a step here, that they would step up, put their rifle between there, and shoot. This area in front of the trench, where both armies would, would try to attack and take the other trench, was called no man's land. We'll get into detail about that. You would have a communication trench, because telephones were, were there, but the lines and the wires were very um, unreliable. So they would have a trench so they could send reports back to the commanding officers, get supplies, and things like that. Here is an aerial version of aircraft was now beginning to be used, thanks to our Wright brothers here in North Carolina. And here's again what the trench system might look like hospital trench, reserved artillery, um, and here is what the no man's land looked like with the attack. And so if you're standing up doing a forward advance, these, the people whose trench you are attacking are just able to stand in their trench, typically in relative safety at times, and just pick off the advancing army. Very, very inefficient way to fight a war. When you were called, when a soldier was called to advance, and here, this is a picture, and you can see how deep the trench is. They would be called, they would be, when they were told to advance, they would, they would call it going over the top. And that means climbing up out of the trench to go forward and attack. And you can see that was one of the reasons there were so many casualties, because as you come up to the top of the trench, you really are a sitting duck. Um, you're, you're just a perfect target to be taken out. Life in the trenches was terrible. The first winter, it was dry only 18 days out of the first, out of the winter, those four months. And so these gentlemen, these soldiers are out in the rain, the cold rain, the snow, and they did not have drainage systems in these trenches. And so, yes, it was dug out of dirt, and the dirt can only hold so much water, and soon the trenches begin to fill up. And so the conditions were miserable. There weren't necessarily showers, there weren't bathrooms. Um, the dirt, the mud, and seated in that all times, 24 hours a day, was very, it was a horrific way to, to fight. Another issue from the water was a disease of trench foot. Their feet were wet all the time. Our soldiers used to have to confront this in Southeast Asia when we fought Vietnam too. And so trench foot is a disease and it, your feet swell. Some of the soldiers would take bayonets when they got trench foot just because they couldn't feel their feet from the swelling. They would um, go ahead and put a, a knife through their foot just to see if, if they could feel anything. And so typically, with the swelling, you didn't. But as the swelling went down, as they got off the front line, um, the pain was excruciating. So it's trench foot was, a, was something that brought a lot of soldiers off the front line. The other thing is, when soldiers went over the top and they would be mowed down, you would not go out there to get the, the, the corpses because you were a per perfect target. And so it was like Thanksgiving feast for the field rats in these places where they fought. And so it was not unusual for the rats to go out there and they would just eat away on the corpse. Or if you were mortally wounded, let's say your leg shut off and your arm shut off and you're still alive, rats would start um, enjoying you. And so as they would catch the rats, some of these you can see grew as large as cats from the constant um, food source. 
they had. The other problem with living in the trenches was lice. Lice was everywhere. You could not get around it. It was, there was no way to avoid it. And so the British used a term called, they said chatting. And what they would do is they would take off their clothes um, and they would just try to pinch and squeeze the lice that they would find embedded in their clothes. And lice always typically will embed in, in warm parts of your body where there's seams. And so they would lay thousands and thousands of eggs and your body heat would cause the eggs to hatch so they could never get rid of the lice. And so they would, they called that chatting, they would just sit for hours and t take their shirts off and, and just squeeze and try to kill the lice, the adult lice that they found crawling all over them. No man's land. This was the area, when I showed you on the map, between the two rows of trenches. And they would be bombarded with bombs from airplanes, huge artillery, guns. Um, the, German had one, the Germans had one called Big Bertha. And the area was just destroyed. It was an environmental disaster. Now understand that in many places in France, these used to be a farmer's fields, a farm, a small village. And once this war started, these troops um, embedded in, in these trenches, these areas were destroyed. During World War II, there were some very significant battles, and they're significant for the reason of the number that killed, that were killed in these battles. And so in Verdun, in, Jan in February, um, just in this one offensive of the Germans trying to take the French trenches, each side lost a half a million soldiers. In the Battle of Somme, 60,000 British soldiers were killed in one day, over a million killed in five months. You need to understand that countries cannot handle that attrition rate for their young males of fighting age. <coughs> War is hell. And these were typical scenes um, and the results where they would be, their trench would be overrun or as they were going over the top trying to attack another trench, they would be stuck in the barbed wire. Um, there are some cases of men being stuck in the barbed wire and just hanging there alive for two, three days because if they moved, they would get shot by the enemy until it was night and they could manage to get out. And the type of wounds that soldiers had to live with the rest of their lives were pretty horrific. Here is an example of just hundreds of soldiers who've lost their legs, um, prosthesis. But on the Eastern Front, the war was fought very different. The war literally was, they did not have trenches, mostly up here in Russia. Down here in Gallipoli, they, they, they did some trench warfare. We'll talk about that. But these on the Eastern Front were more open plains in, this is in the modern day, today's modern day country of Poland. These were open plains where the armies would go out and attack and then retreat. They weren't in trenches. The problem with the um, Eastern Front for Russia was, Russia was in, in many ways a backward country, a country mostly of peasants and farmers. In the larger cities you would have businesses and technologies and uh, factories, but there were m many, many peasants. And so the Russian government didn't have enough supplies for their army. They called up 12 million. And by, and we start hearing about at the middle of 1915, where Russia is running out of guns and Russia is running out of bullets. And so they're sending, what they would do is they would have their soldiers line up before a battle and attack. The front row would have rifles. And they were cho 
told, go charge. Well, they would charge and they could shoot and there was some defense there. But as they got killed, the second line was ordered to go out, grab, pick up their rifle, and then continue on. There, the soldiers didn't even have rifles individually. And so that was, a, with the amount of casualties from that, many of the peasants, many of uh, the people in Russia began to turn on the czar and the government because they felt like he was so removed from what he was asking his people to do and that thus caused the Russian Revolution. And we will continue with this, how the war was fought in the next video.